on the chip. That's the way to do it. That car sounds good. Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo, and today we're gonna to talk about random car words that seem to make no sense, but almost everybody at the track knows what they're talking about. It's stuff you'll hear and you'll be like, I can't imagine how that could possibly relate to a car and not a wild animal or like a space station. When you hear this stuff, you're like, am I insane? Who's the idiot here? Let's figure it out. Because I know, listen, you're not gonna be at a racetrack and go, excuse me, sir, covered in sweat and full of adrenaline. What exactly does that mean? Because you want to be in the know and you want to keep it cool. So I'm going to help you. We're going to give you the lowdown and we're going to keep that cool status high. So these terms have been around for a million years. It's just like a lot of it is just crazy shorthand and it's, it's like really hard to understand or decipher or whatever, but let's dig into them because I think number one, I'm going to tell you what they mean. And number two, I'm going to tell you where I think they originated from. One of the first ones that blew my mind was, I was working in a tire shop as a kid, and one of the old Vietnam vets that was working there, this is like in the late 90s, told me that we would get his old CB750 out on the highway, crack the throttle open, and let that thing eat. So to let something eat means to just crack the throttle and let it essentially rip. What I think the origin is, is that like engine sort of like an air pump, it's sucking all that air and fuel in and then pumping it out the exhaust. So that's how that thing eats and to let her eat means to just crack it open and hammer the throttle down. Another one I like is on the pipe. Now are we talking about like drug addicts or like terrible things like that? No, we're not. We're talking about plumbers? No, we're not. We're talking about on the pipe means to have the car in its power band, right? When, when an engine is on the pipe, it's where it makes peak power, right? And I believe, in my guess, is that it comes from two-stroke motocross bikes when you have a tuned exhaust chamber, um, and essentially they are tuned to deliver most power because of the way that the pulses are running through it at a certain RPM band. So when you get that thing up on the pipe, that means it's really working, the engine is making peak power, it's really happy. Two strokes are cool. Get in the pipe, man. I don't know. Yeah, it could be a surfing turn. I don't think so. I think I've got that one dialed in. But like, who knows? And it became a thing that everyone just said about like driving a car or a motorcycle where it makes power. But it has this random origin in a very specific type of racing and a very specific type of engine. One thing you'll hear somebody say, bed in the brakes, right? Bed in, you gotta bed in your brakes. You gotta bed them in. Uh, does this mean take them out, romance them at the end of the night, you gotta take them to bed? Of course it does not, it doesn't, because car guys are not Lotharios, right? Nobody is focused on that, they're focused on their cars. Bed in your brakes, it's very silly. It means to go out and break them in and so that they bed in, that they seat very well to the rotors or you know, if it's the drum brake to the drums. But that's, that's the point of it, is that you take it out, you do a bunch of hard stops to get them to more or less wear off any inconsistencies or irregularities in the flat surface and make sure that they are nice and flat and quote unquote, bedded in. Get your minds out of the gutter. Come on. Get your minds out of the gutter, folks. Here we go, okay. Oh, that one could be filthy. Let me move to this other one. Uh, weed it, right? You hear somebody and you just gotta weed that thing. You gotta weed it, weed it, weed it. Are we talking about gardening? No, we're not talking about gardening. Are we talking about the substance that's now legal in like 16 states for recreation? No, we're not. No, we're not, Cheech and Chong, calm down. <laughs> what we're talking about here is when you stomp on the gas pedal so hard that there's carpet coming up around it, you've got it in the weeds, right? So it means to floor it, to hit the gas, to hammer down. What's hammer down mean? We'll talk about that later. You can weed it, you gotta weed that thing. I, that's my guess too. The, the definitions, for the record, these definitions are coming just out of my experience and my own brain. If you think they're wrong, 
Let me know if you think they're right. That's cool too. Spool it up, right? Are we talking about sewing? No. Are we talking about turbochargers? Absolutely. So to spool up a turbocharger means to get it into boost. Turbochargers spin off of your exhaust. I have one here, let's look. Your exhaust spins this guy, which then spins this fan, which sucks in air and crams it into your engine, making fun. And when that happens, you have spooled it up. There's certainly like different ways to spool it up. If you're driving an old school, really laggy turbo car, it can take forever, right? You'd hit the gas and you'd be like, I'm waiting for it to spool up. So that's what spool up means. It means for your turbocharger to finally achieve boost and make the party happen. I have no idea where it comes from. My best guess is it's like the spinning motion. Anytime you're spooling anything up, it's finally spinning quickly. Now it's spooling. Does that mean like extension cords or like thread? I have no idea, but I do like the term. I think it's cool. And that's what it means. It means to get that turbocharger making boost. Spool that thing, you gotta spool her up. Get it spooled up. Mark IV Supra, exactly. Yeah, spooled, gone. That's how it works. All right, bang shift. Again, get your minds out of the gutter. We're talking about shifting a manual transmission car rowing through the gears. And essentially, I think it's from back in the day when you would drive your car, your old four-speed car, like my Firebird here, so hard that it would overspeed, you, would, you wouldn't wait for the synchros to mess. You would just cram it into gear, power shift it in, and it would ka-chunk go into gear. It'd be that bang. So that is it. You gotta bang shift that thing, right? It means not wasting time. Boom, waiting, synchro, go. It means bang. It's in gear, hit the gas, get to the next one. So we have checked bangshift.com. Shout out Brian Loans and David Freiberger at one point. Uh, essentially, it's the, exactly what I'm talking about. Insert Grumpy Jenkins footage here. Yes. Yeah, obviously. Grumpy Jenkins, rest in peace. King, absolute king. Another dude from right here in Pennsylvania. All right, what else we got? Let her eat, spool it up, on the pipe, bang shift. This is something you're gonna hear at a swap meet, running around, or when guys got their hoods popped back in the day at a drive-in, whatever it is. They talk about three-quarter race cam. Well, it's got a three-quarter race cam. Now, this also kind of aligns with a later term from the 90s, which was like, I got a stage three clutch. I got a stage two turbo. All of these things are nonsense. Three-quarter race cam is not a thing you can point to and go, that's a three-quarter race cam. It essentially means a cam that's way more rowdy than stock, but not a full over-the-top cam that is a race cam you couldn't put on the street. So people just decided to say that's about rowdy enough to call it three quarters of a race cam. I think it's a ridiculous term. I'd like to know more information about a camshaft. Give me lift, give me duration, something like that. Is it a roller? Is it flat tap it? Um, but people will still throw that stuff around and that's what they mean. And the stage two, stage one, stage three stuff, which is like real, it would seem to be really prevalent in like Subaru worlds or Mitsubishi stuff, turbo stuff from the 90s. Again, I don't know because it's like, what is, you know, Greddy's stage two versus Perrin or whoever else? It's really a difficult thing where if you're the kind of person to go out and go like, I got a stage three this and a stage two that, stop doing it because this is not cool and it's irrelevant and just know the parts that are on your car and this is, real life is not a video game. So like that's also where I think a lot of this stuff came from where you'd go like beep boop, I want more of this and you would get on Gran Turismo stage four or three or whatever. And uh, it's not cool. Just pick the actual parts and learn how to describe them. And I, yeah, that one I'm not even super, I, that's my best understanding based on, again, it's a very vague term. Uh, you can't really nail it down. No one ever sold a camshaft called a three-quarter raise cam. So 
it's mostly due to the swap meets telling you like this thing's pretty rowdy but they could also just say hey it's got you know it's a 268 xe but they don't next we're going to talk about this is something i heard more i grew up essentially driving a four-speed muscle car and then having like turbo rx7s they were all manual uh drift racing stuff and then you know started doing way back into hot rod stuff in about 2015 and that's when I started hearing this term. And I was able to kind of understand what everybody meant. They'd say flash the converter, right? You'd be at the line, at the drag strip, I'm gonna flash the converter. Does that mean exposing yourself to a piece of machinery? No, it does not, okay? Flash the converter means this. Converters, uh, a torque converter is what they're talking about. Essentially, you're putting your car into gear and you're figuring out the best way to launch your automatic car at the drag strip and to flash the converter up. A converter is essentially a controlled slip system that eventually will stall and lock together. Um, that's how it transfers power without a clutch from your engine to your transmission, right? So more or less, when you're at the line and you've got it loaded, it will flash up once to a little bit of a higher RPM and then grab and launch the car. That's what it comes from. I'm gonna ask these dudes standing here who know more about drag racing and automatics than me real quick. You guys, is that right? Are we good in there? Is that check out? Is that check out? Cool, I knew it. I totally knew it. Crushed it. My whole life I've been driving mostly manual performance cars. So automatics are cool. They're super repeatable for drag racing. Again, this is like super drag race specific, but it's a thing you're gonna hear and try to understand. I'll say this about all cars in general, I will take a more fun car over a more fast car every time. And even if a car's two tenths faster as an automatic, I'd still much rather be engaged, banging it through the gears, bang shifting that thing, you know what I mean? And having fun. This is again, I didn't grow up drag racing, I grew up drifting. Uh, make a hit is a great one. Are you going to hire someone to be murdered? No, no you're not. That's not what make a hit means. Make a hit means to just make a run, just to make a pass at the drag strip. Launch your car, drive it down, get a time, the end. They call it make a hit because it sounds way cooler. And that's pretty much it. Make a hit. Boom, you did it. You can make a hit in your mom's minivan. Is that cool? Probably not, but you can still do it. All right, here's another one that people throw around. It's mostly racing specific, tow and go. What does that mean? Like, are we towing something down the road? Does it mean like, does it have to do with towing? Does it have to do with trucks, trailers, et cetera? No, it doesn't, right? Uh, essentially, for me, what I think it's from is like when we would be getting into incidents at the, at the track where like you wreck your car, whatever it is, and you have to get it set up and get back on track, you would just set the tow. The tow is the most important alignment uh, component and then you're back out on track. So it's like, just figure, like that's, get the tow done, get it out on track. Tow and go, just get it dialed and go. Obviously caster, camber, you know, whatever. KPI, all that stuff is important, but guess what? Number of the one thing you need is the wheels to point in the same direction. So you get the tow done and you can hit the track or the street, whatever it is. That's it, boom, tow and go. Talking about feet, absolutely not. That's a different channel. That's a different thing perverts. Another one I like, I think you can probably figure out, uh, is swapped ends, right? Are you taking parts off one thing, put it on the other? What does that mean? Someone says their car swapped ends. What it means is, and I think it's mostly from like road racy type stuff, it just means your car spun out, right? You're driving it and it swapped ends. It sounds pretty tough and cool to be like, hey, you know, it just swapped ends. It's not like I made a big mistake and then the car spun off the track. You just say like, oh, it swapped ends, like no big whoop. But uh, that's what it means. It means your car, the old loop-de-loop. -loop. And uh, yeah, try to keep that from happening for the, that's a general request from me. All right, now we're finally to like maybe my favorite term that people talk about, and it's definitely hard to understand. It's got a very clear origin and it is awesome. It's called put it on the chip. You've heard people go, boy, put that thing on the chip. Uh, here's what that means, is to hit the rev limiter in your car. This comes mostly from American cars running like MSD style ignition boxes because the way that the rev limiter is controlled are these little chips. You're not talking about silicone chips from your computer, you're not talking about Tostitos, you're not talking about any of that stuff. You're talking about these little rev limiter chips that go from like 5,000, 5,200, 5,500, 6,000, and you put that chip in the box and once you rev it up and put it, it hits that chip, that's when you hit the limiter and will hold your engine right at that RPM where the party is 
rocking the hardest. So you do it a burnout and you're in the, in the burnout box and you put it up on the chip, it's gonna sit there at 6500 wherever your chip is dialed in and that's what it means. You gotta put it on the chip. That's the way to do it. My car sounds good. Burnouts are awesome. Uh, I use that term now for any kind of car, whether or not it's got you know, an MSD style ignition box, it could have anything. If I find that rev limiter, I'm putting it on the chip. So that's it. Take any car, rentals, uh, brand new cars, old cars, rev them up until they go bang, 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 bang. And you put it on the chip. That's it for this episode of Stay Tuned. This was super fun. Uh, let me know in the comments any other stuff you want to talk about, and I will do my best to answer them and to come up with more fun videos. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.